Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Um, <laughs> Andy Morales jammed him down, and my guest, special guest today, is Kristen El Papazano. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. For real. So, hmm. you're welcome. You're welcome. So, what we're going to do, obviously, you know, like um, interview, ask some questions, have a good yeah. conversation, and read some of your pieces so people have an idea of who you are and what, you know, the style that you write. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the pieces that I read, you know, and then. Um, hopefully we have enough time. You could be one of your pieces as well. So, okay. you know. All right. So this first piece I'm going to read. So I'm just curious. So a lot of your pieces don't have titles. I know there's no title. Do you, you do that on purpose? Or? No, I just, I, I mean, I sort of just write what comes to me. And I mean, if you look at my page, some have titles. But I don't I really don't think about titling a lot of my pieces unless I feel like I need to. I don't know. It's just whatever flows out. So... Um, right, right. So I was like, when do you write? I'm like, I write whenever. It could be, I'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and write like at two in the morning and just go back to bed. All right, no, I'm the same <laughs> so, way. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. It's, it's true. Sometimes the, the, the not so titled ones are sometimes the best ones too, actually. Yeah, it is. There definitely is. So, yeah, no titles. It just, when it comes, it comes, you know, if there needs to be one. Right. Like, I'll call it a title. Like, like usually when I do my titles, I do the whole, uh, I'll pick a word in, in the poem and then the title. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I'll do that. Yeah, it just makes it easier because I come up with a title <laughs> and then the song is like the, 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 the word is not in the title, uh, in the poem. It's like, man. Eh. But that, yeah. that, that's just me, though. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, I'm, I'm going to read this first piece and then we'll talk about the piece. I was falling down this dark path. Eyes were so heavy, barely opening. The only thing I wanted was a drink to touch my lips to take away the agony life muted itself didn't seem as if it was coming back left there standing on alone echoes in the background of tears hitting the floor stench of death my heart collapsing one last time before corridoring over um, well talk to me about this piece i i wrote that one recently i think it was like in the last few weeks i think um so i just was I think it was just like, I'm like, you know, of course, like one of the quarantine days after everything started, I just sort of had something flow. And I'm like, is this how a lot of people are thinking right now that are alone? Or, I mean, because as much as, you know, we can't go out, we're, I mean, it needs to be talked about, like, mental health is really, really bad right now. And yes. it's, you know, I'm lucky that I have people I can talk to if I need it. Or, you know, I've dealt with a lot of things by myself. So I think that has helped me. You know, I sort of know how I am, but I just sort of wanted to put something out there like me i feel like maybe this is what a lot of people are going through you know so i mean i've been there before where i've been all up in my head or in my room and i feel like life just sucked at that moment you know and we have nowhere to go and you don't want to go out and talk to anyone or you go then you don't want to put your problems on them but i don't know jordi just it literally just came to me i was just like i wonder how everyone else is think feeling about this especially with people that need to really talk to someone so that it sort of just flo uh, flowed from there so, yeah no yeah. i feel you on that I remember, um, cause 2013 was when I came to the Lord, but 18 before that, I know what uh -huh. you're saying. Cause I remember when I had friends, well, I don't, I, I knew a lot of people, but my uh -huh. trust was very, very small, yeah. but I've had moments where I would be in my bedroom crying, oh, yeah. not understanding why I was still depressed. Yeah. Like I had friends. Yeah. I was sheltered and, and I had a rough childhood, but it's just yeah. at the end of the day, it was like those thoughts. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's how it is sometimes, you know. Thanks for life. And, yes, yes. And I would, I would shut down. I, I would like make sure my phone was pitch black. Mm -hmm. Put on some real depressing music. Oh and yeah. Then I would just all the time music. The most depressing shit I'm blasting, and then I'm crying. As yes. I'm blasting it. <laughs> yes. Stay back. Oh man. But there was always the whole. Um. How do you explain it? There was always the whole like. You do this in private, but then when you come out, mm -hmm. you know, and you face your friends, you face the world. It's like yeah. you don't want to keep on you talking have to about put it. The mask on. Yeah, you have to. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I did that very well. Um, when we get into later about like some of the parts of the book with my last relationship, I wore that mask very well. And I mean, like, I mean, at one point, I was like crying every night for like six months because uh, wow. I just, I was just bad. You know, I was just, yeah, it sucks when you're all in your head. You know. You don't want to put that, 
you don't want to you don't you're already dealing with what what's going on inside of you so you don't want to really tell anyone else because then they're going to want to talk about it and you don't really want to talk about it because all you do is think about it when you're by yourself you know so that's why we always yes. do have to wear that fake smile and everything's fine and rainbows and that but it's not like that <laughs> right no it's true it's not like that it's, it's so true all. And like that, that struggle is real. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie. That struggle is real. And I feel like a lot of people, we like, I know in my social circle in the mm -hmm. past, they're like, oh, you're okay. And then I'm like, no, yeah, I'm fine. And then when I tell somebody, someone, um, mm -hmm. when I tell something to certain people, it's mm -hmm. like they say they understand, but then yeah. stop them out. Okay, do you really, really understand? understand? Yeah, yeah. Do you really no, understand? Or you just saying that because you feel like you're my friend? Because yeah. don't say that just to make me feel better. Say it because yeah. you're true understand and it's just yeah. struggle is just real you know and you know you don't know if like and who how they're gonna come at you or be like oh you shouldn't feel that way get over it i'm like no or you should just it, but people act like it's like that to get over stuff it's I'm not like, no, like it's that not. Like, oh. it, that's not normal that you can especially if you have something traumatic happening you would just not have snap with the fingers and everything is going to be fine oh they said get over it so i need to get over it no it's not like that you know you that's don't know how everyone feels is. You know, and if you say that you heal that fast, I really don't believe that you do because you really have to spend time within yourself to see, you know, if you really are healing or you're saying that you're healing just to block it out and make yourself feel better and carry on. And then that never works out in the end because you're right. going to have more breakdowns. <laughs> you no, know? And it's so true. It's so true because I, I get that, like, even me now that I walk in the Lord, but I still have my struggles too. Like, yeah, I, I'm in mm -hmm. a better place mentally and emotionally, but I still have my moments. Like, if I'm by myself, I have my moments where... I'll just get depressed and don't know why I'm getting depressed. It, it, depression is a real thing. Yeah. Like, if people think getting depressed is just sadness and that's like, no, it's, no. It's, it starts there, but it's not just that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big misconception about depression is people who take medication. I, yes. I when I was growing up, I yeah. took medication for years and that mm -hmm. I just felt like it made me worse, really. Yeah. Yeah. You don't feel like you're, um, when I had like anxiety years ago, they gave me, um, like anxiety. I never like knew what anxiety was. Like I just had it at work one day. And I remember they gave me this small pill and I just felt like a zombie. And I was like, I'm not taking this. Like I can't even function. Like I'm not laughing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to feel like this. It's not normal to just be like, you know, it's, I was just going through the motions, but I wasn't doing yeah. anything. Like I understand like if you get, super stressed or something really traumatic happens and if you need to take something to calm you down or relax you like i understand that but like i'm more of like the holistic route of trying to be healing from the inside and you know wow. meditating and you know really talking about my problems if i really need to talk some i'm very much into let's talk because no one wants to talk everyone wants to just yeah everybody party. Wants to just like no 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 leave me alone and yeah no nah. it's and sometimes we need that yeah. Yep. I mean, Sometimes like, I remember to to I would drink, I was drink with, especially with my ex, like, it just, nothing was getting better, and I would try to talk to him, and he just didn't want to listen, and I just remember I was just going out and drinking all the time, because it was like, I, that's the only way I knew to cope, and then I, Gosh. after one point, I was like, I gotta stop, like, this is not me, like, I'm getting blackout drunk, and like, and then I would see some of my friends going through it, and I'm like, learn from me, don't do this, because you're gonna have to deal with your shit eventually, don't follow yes. the path that I did. You know, like you really, people really don't understand. They like really have to deal with like what happens to them. You know, you're never going to heal. You're never going to get better unless you acknowledge it and start working from the inside out. No, it's so true. And I was going to yeah. say, you said something very like, like right there about the whole, like when you start getting drunk and you start, you know, you would black out. I know. Mm -hmm. I remember my wife in her um second marriage. This is before me actually. Mm -hmm. Um, um, you know, because I I've been best friends of my wife since like you know like 10 years already but i remember yeah. in her second marriage like she was just like that she wasn't happy mm -hmm. she was just depressed and she would get black out but i was always the guy she ran to kind of mm -hmm. thing basically and what i'll come down to is everything you said was so spot because it is like that because when the more you keep doing that the more you keep on turning yourself and and mm -hmm. she did get to that point where you know she lost a lot of things she lost her job mm -hmm. miscarriage everything a lot of things she lost and then you know, once she finally came to the Lord, you know, things started to get better for her. But, you know, of course, but even with that, she still goes through some things, too. I still go through some things, too. I struggle mm -hmm. just like you struggle. Yeah. Like, and that's what it is. Every day is a struggle, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And sometimes to say, oh, you need to just stop drinking and that's it. No, it's not that easy sometimes. Yeah. When you feel like you have no, that no one to depend on, too, or even talk to, that's why you drink more or you do drugs or you do, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I want to go out and drink because I want to go and have a drink and hang out with my friends. I don't want to go out and drink to block what's been happening, you know. Right, right, you know? yeah. I remember my dad, 
I remember my dad when he was alive, like, you know, when my grandmother died every like New Year's Eve, like the day before, every year he put on like his boleros, I guess. Mm -hmm. And she start crying over his mother for years. And then like I'm a child, I didn't understand all that stuff, but I remember my mother was to get mad at him, like just mm -hmm. every year, same bull crap what it all came yeah. down to. And like I didn't like, I understand it now, but I didn't understand mm -hmm. it then. And it's like I didn't realize yeah. a part of my life I was getting that way too because yeah. My father wasn't affectionate, you know, my, mm -hmm. brother, my older brother really wasn't around like that. And yeah, I had people, I had friends, but I wasn't the whole, um, uh, like, you know, like, like happy go luck. Oh yeah. Like it was the front, but mm -hmm. again, I was so sad. I was inheriting some of their stuff and it was just like, oh crap. Like I was getting to a bad place too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes it's not easy to get out of that. To some people, it's easier than others, but the mm -hmm. struggle is still real. The, the, the process is still there. Yeah. It's so that's that struggle is real. Like, it is. Know. People don't get it. Yeah, it's true. All right. So this next piece I'm going to read. Okay. All right. Was I not supposed to fight for this love? Just lay down without you knowing how I truly felt. Just let the words fall silence. No, that's not me. If we don't fight for the people we love, how will we ever know the outcome of the story? I don't live in the regret type of love. I'm life. So I would rather bear all of it than die drowning in my thoughts. And I think now that goes back to what you said before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wrote that piece... I was with my ex for a, a long time, like 16 years. And wow. um, I put everything plus more into like trying to make this work. And it wasn't a healthy relationship. It was, you know, some mental abuse, verbal abuse, <clears throat> emotional abuse, you know. And um, I, but like, you know, when you're young and you're in it, you don't get it. You know, like I never thought anyone was going through what I was going through. I really fell into poetry because I started reading. But these, uh, the first poem, I, the poet I really started following was Art Sin. <clears throat> and then it was sort of just made me feel better that someone else has gone through what I've gone through, you know. Or, but um, it was true. Like, I, I really fight for the people and the things that I care about. And, I mean, that's how, I think that's what you're supposed to do, you know. And I, when I left that relationship, I left knowing that I did everything I possibly could and just didn't work. Like, I have no regrets in that relationship at all. I mean, people were like, well, you were with him for so long. You should have left early. And I said, no, but that was on my own terms when I needed to leave. I wasn't too so Just because you right. told me to leave, I'm not going to leave. I have to want to do it on my own. And was it a healthy relationship? It wasn't all bad, but it definitely wasn't all good. Um, right. But I just really feel like you really need to fight for the things and the people that you care about, you know. And, you know, we don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring and I especially with all this going on and you know what if something would happen to someone and they never knew how I felt you know and then I would always have that regret why didn't I say that or why didn't I do this or you right. know, so I always really fight for all the relationships I have in my life and I know they're not all gonna be perfect but you know that's what you do when you care about people but I mean yeah it was pretty much I, that was peace was inspired from him for sure okay okay yeah. wow no, it's true. Like, and, and unfortunately, the people you fight for sometimes they don't get it, and it's like they rather okay, fine, yeah, you could keep doing that, but I'm not gonna listen to you type situation. Yes. And unfortunately, I think they realize it's too late. Mm -hmm. Like once you leave and you worry about yourself, then it's yeah. like okay, now it's like okay, I, I can't deal with you anymore. But then yeah. now, when it, it's kind of like they somehow come back for you type of thing but it's like oh mm -hmm. but it's too late now you want to yeah. fix this what about yeah. when i was trying to fight for you and i've yeah, had friends yeah. like that where all oh, but mm -hmm. yeah, like, I don't understand that. yeah like why why does it take me really having to leave you and really stay gone to make you realize he had that moment with me too i remember we were on the phone and he just i i think when you tell people you, you're gonna go to new york people act like the new york is so untouchable and the, i think he just never thought i was gonna go to new york like oh she's not gonna go to new york yeah right and i was like no i'm serious like i'm leaving you're, you're gonna come or you're not like if we don't you know we're not gonna be together but then um he sort of just had this aha moment but i mean it was like it took 16 years for you to have that aha moment on the phone and it was like he finally got it and then i mean i just told him i like i forgave him like i'm not i I'm not a hateful person. When I say forgive you, I forgive you. I move on. I don't bring up past shit from 20, 10 years ago. When I really say right. forgive someone, I really do. And 
I like I remember I just told him I said the best advice I gave him I said you know whoever comes along later on in your life try to learn from what happened between us and maybe it will be better on for you with that person you know but yeah it just it takes you really having to like leave and pack your bags for them to really get it and then it's too late half the time you know it's just no, it's, it's, sad. So it's sad that you have to go to that extreme to make someone realize something you know when they could have just yeah. opened their eyes and realized that at the moment so but, you know it's fine i wish him the best i mean and we're, we're still cool i wish him the best you know it just will never be right and sometimes uh, it just doesn't work no that's how it is sometimes yeah Wow. No, yeah, it's just like you sort of, you know, and it, he was my first love. So, you know, a lot of people aren't really don't last last with their first love. You know, I met him yeah, when I was young true. in high school and then, you know, up to my 30s. And, you know, we didn't have a horrible story, but it wasn't great. But I mean, it just wasn't meant to be in the end for me and him. Right. No, and that's what it was for me, too. I remember, like, I've only had two girlfriends and then I met, you know, then I married my wife. But um, everything you said, too, you never... Uh, with my first love, I you never end up unless you're my parents from back in their days where yeah. that's just like oh, sweetheart. Okay, yeah. I still and that's sick. amazing too. If you last with your first love, you really still love them as much as you did from way back. That's great. You know, good props for that. I want that. That'd be great. <laughs> you know, right? But it never. But nine times out of ten, it never happens that way. It's so true. And mm -hmm. um, but you said something very interesting. I like the fact that you know. I guess like in your next relationship, you always learn from the other two. In my case, I've learned from the last two relationships I had mm -hmm. that when I was with my wife now, mm -hmm. is that I try my best not to act or not to react the same way with a certain situation when when yeah. I was with the other two. And, and it's true because you know what, that, um, to apply this to my life, you know, they're two, they're, these are three different people. Mm -hmm. I can't compare the the three and think, oh, but you do this that reminds me of that. No, because if that's the case, then that means I haven't truly let go. Yeah, yeah. And, and and there's a lot of us that don't really know mm -hmm. until it happens. And I, I say this in my life too, or like I've realized too, like there's certain things I was still holding on to that my wife had to bring to my attention. Because I tell my wife everything. I, I tell her what I've been through. She knows and I know what mm -hmm. she's been through. And she'll say, okay, but you know what? The fact that you would say something like this, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, you you're still holding on to that and it's yeah. true like she'll pray for me and she would you know bring it to my attention look babe i'm not that person i'm not them like why are you comparing me and sometimes comparison hurts the next person with you sometimes yeah. you don't need to be like that yeah it's true but it's but i think we react away because that's what we're so used to you know yeah. i'm so really guarded if i when i talk to guys or whatever and but it's like i have to protect myself too in the end you know i know what i've been through and i know what i'm never gonna go through again so like and i've told people like if, if i snapped at someone i'm like okay i'm sorry like i, I apologize it's not you right. it's just this is who i am i have to protect myself because i know what the hell i've been through <laughs> and i never wanted yeah. to experience i never want anyone experience a lot of the shit that i went through you know Right. right but that's i mean that's i think that's just normal and so we really start to get to trust and know the person then we'll sort of be more you know let our guard down more but i mean i i understand what you're saying like i'm in the exact same way you know we're just you did what you said you said because that's was something that you're used to you know that had okay. that effect on you and it will go away eventually but you know it takes time too with that as well oh absolutely you know? I think, like you said too, like it's sometimes it's easy because me and my wife had this conversation a lot too. Where it's like sometimes it's easier to go back to something you know because it's there. So when a new thing comes in, we don't know how to deal with the new thing. If, yeah. if that makes sense. No, yeah, because we go to the familiarness of like the bullshit, and that's what it is. Because that's what we're comfortable with. Because that's what we've been accustomed to for all these years, or how long you've been with the person, or you've had the experience. You know, and it is. It's you like, well, I already know this situation, so I know how to sort of deal with it. That's And it's not right. sad that we sort of want to go to the, you know, yeah. stick around the negative and not see that positive right. you know, relationship come out of it. Yeah. So true. And it's like, I remember when my, me and my wife started dating first, mm -hmm. she, she went through that too. Like, you know, even though I was doing everything possible to make sure her, look, I'm not this guy, you'll see it. And, and yeah, she'll see it. But then there was little things, you know what it is? It's like, even though I know it's not that, but it looks too familiar. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, it's familiar. And it looks too familiar. So even though you're obviously just hanging out with your friend, let's say, for example, but because the way the communication happened, like certain aspects of how I told I was hanging out with a friend, mm -hmm. it, looked, it reminded me of my last husband. And yeah. it reminded me of, 
oh, but but it looks too familiar for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I knew she didn't mean to come off at me a certain way, yeah. but then my problem was I took it personal because now that took me back to my second girl where she was questioning every little thing I was doing. Yeah. And yeah. it was just like, it oh, but it little comes spiral into it, yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's took a lot. And then, like, just getting to know each other more. And we both had our moment where it was just like, babe, I'm sorry. Like, love, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to be better. And she's going to try to be better. And it worked. And we are a lot better now. Let's do it. Like, crazy yeah. sometimes. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> We're a lot better now than, like, three, uh, maybe four years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Because we went through the, um, because they say in the first year, the marriage is the honeymoon, and after that, you go through mm-hmm. the craziness. But we went through that before we got married. So when we got married, yeah, we went through some weird craziness, but it wasn't as bad as everyone said was going to be. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, okay, because we kind of went through it already. And I guess yeah. because we were friends first, and I think that's yeah. what gave us a little bit of an advantage. But even mm-hmm. that, like, and, and I don't want to get it confused either, because people say, oh, because you guys are friends. You know, that means, mm-hmm. oh, you guys have a good, right? You guys don't argue. No, we argue too. Yeah. I drive her crazy. She wants to throw me out the window sometimes. You know, <laughs> yeah. so trust me. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> maybe with a hammer or something, you know, but people people get that confused and they don't think, oh, you guys don't go through it. No, we go through things too. You know, like, I, like, yes. I have a one year old. My wife goes through the home just too, and I have to be the husband. I have to be the comfort. Just mm-hmm. like when I go through stress over stupid things, she, she's there for me also, you know, yeah. but to me, we don't drive each other crazy and people get yeah. that confused because you've been friends for a long time you know yeah. so it's, um, relationships are hard people understand that like, they take work you know it's not gonna be this perfect and happy and it really does take work i mean it, i mean it, it takes a lot of work especially a healthy okay. relationship too you know so it's like it just takes a lot of work but good i'm good i'm good I'm glad for you guys good you oh, guys thank you. great that's great but i think the biggest issue with relationship i guess there's it's not that there's not communication. Maybe there's not enough communication. Mm-hmm. If, if that may, I think that's what the main problem is. There's not enough. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. And I, I'm still going to speak my, my truth. Because like when I was in my relationship, I was like, I I was never. I felt like allowed to speak up if I was upset. You know, he turned it around somehow, and somehow it was my fault. And I'm like. You know, now I'm like, if, if you piss me off, if you do anything, I'm going to tell you, I do it in a respectful way. And then if, if we can't talk at that moment, then you can walk away. And once we cool down, then we can talk because it's like, no one's going to, I don't like to fight. I don't like to yell because no one's really listening because the only, only thing that they're thinking of next is what they're going to say next. They're not listening to actually what oh you're saying. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. And that's oh what my I keep on trying to tell people, like, you have to be able to, and I've done this with relationships in my family too like you know unless we talk calmly I mean don't get me wrong there's gonna be moments that you're gonna get pissed or get mad and something you know you're gonna yell or whatever you know and not everyone's perfect and I get that like but majority of like my relationships from here and out I want to be able to talk to you and communicate with you and if we can't talk and communicate and I can't express my feelings and I can't have a relationship with you it's not to me that's not a relationship you know wow. I really I really am vocal I'm never ashamed of my past and the things I've been through and you know, I'm, I'm very much open, but like, you know, I want to be able to express myself and talk. And if you hurt me, regardless if you don't understand why I'm hurt, you still have to acknowledge that you hurt me, you know? So right, communication right, is right. like major with me, major, major, major. So, and that's like communication and trust, of course, is like, oh my God. Yeah. you know, what's funny. Like, as you're tell, like saying what you're saying, that actually brought conviction on me because <laughs> that is the biggest habit that I have sometimes like something my wife just wants to food. listen before mm-hmm. you say something you're going to regret later yeah and I am oh my god I have no I, I can't even tell you how many times especially in the beginning of our marriage where mm-hmm. like no we got to talk right now but yeah. then it's like maybe right now is not the time because yeah. it, it's a lot of times out of 10 you're talking out of emotion and then you yeah. say the wrong thing yeah. you know you can't take that back yeah you can't you know one thing I read um I know the but I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, be all biblical about it, but like, no, even the Bible says there's like power in tongue, you know, you could bring life or bring death. And it's mm-hmm. like, you say something, you don't know how much that could hurt someone so bad. And wow. I heard this lesson, you know, right? And I'm still learning this lesson. The hard way yeah, you, it sticks with you for a very long. See, like, I've never been the one that's 
and I've all and I said I've always been like this. I've never been the one that's got upset and said something really messed up and then was like, Oh, I'm sorry later. I've had people do that to me and like I don't want to do that to someone else because those words will stick in your head. I mean, I still have something that I mean, I met my ex when he was we are I was like gonna be almost seventeen, but he said something to me. Um he was mad. I remember he was mad because I was trying to get this ironing board up and I couldn't get in. I think I was like 19 or something. I couldn't get the ironing board up. And I was like, can you help me? And he said, you're useless. What are you good for? And those wow. words like stuck and it's still, and I don't dwell on it, but like, you know, those words how 16 years later are still in my head that that's something that, you know, you, that I'm not going to forget, honestly, anytime soon. And I'm not heard from it mm -hmm. anymore, but it's just like, the power of words, people don't understand the power of their words. And some people might not be able to heal as best as other people from it too, you know? And I just, I mean, that's something I've always remembered that he said. And I was like, damn, that's fucked up. How are you gonna say that to someone? <laughs> you know, right. like, people are people and they're gonna say and do what they want. And That's, wow. And, that, and I know what you're saying too, cause I've had things like that said to me, even by my <laughs> own family members that's like, I look back now, and I'm not gonna lie, like even though it's not as bad now, but I still struggle with like low self-esteem. Yeah. My wife has to go like this to me and be mm -hmm. like, listen, you're my husband now. You're not yeah. if I'm telling you you are unique and you're this, mm -hmm. just take my word for it. But then when it's the other way around, and then mm -hmm. my wife will something and I'm telling her, listen, you're beautiful, and it's like she doesn't believe it, then it's like, oh crap, but just the 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 words like words people don't really how much of an impact words really have yeah they really it really really does it yeah it really does it really really does sorry oh, yeah man. i'm just like you know deep in my thoughts about it just like that because i'm always like i said i'm so vocal about being able to be honest and you know it's right. just some people's words just cut you so deep that you just never heal from it yeah. you know and, and, and i know there's times i've done that without me even like not in, out of malice like i'll be yeah. honest about something but maybe mm -hmm. not what i said but mm -hmm. the way i came off the delivery the delivery then it was just like oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to say it like that Mm -hmm. Or I didn't mean, I, I, that's not what I was trying to say because it gets misunderstood. And I think with me, unfortunately for me, when I was growing up, I didn't know how to talk correctly, I guess, if that makes sense. No, like, I understand what you're saying, yeah. And it's like, so this is how I learned how to speak. So I was always about being honest too, but I've mm -hmm. been told a lot of people that you're too honest. Yeah. No. And sometimes <laughs> even that gets me It sucks. I'm too honest. I've been told I'm too honest, but I'm like, there's a way that you can say it when you say, right. it. you know, you sort of have to gauge each person and how they're going to take it. So you sort of have to fig figure out like how you're going to deliver in a way that they're, they're not going to get offended. But I'd Gosh. rather be too honest. I'd rather be too honest and not honest at all. I'm sorry. That's true. That's true. And even I'm, I, again, I've learned that lesson for a really, really mm -hmm. long time, like, the hard way too, because that is true. Like I want to be as honest as possible. Yeah, this. It, I, I guess they call it being blunt, but it's mm -hmm. like again it's like i like i just want to be honest with the people yeah. you know but i, I realized so over time there's just some people that sometimes sometimes they just can't handle it sometimes and i'm like oh, yeah. i have to be sensitive to that and that's a struggle that i have that mm -hmm. i still need to learn how to navigate that where okay i need to know what my basically my wife tells me know your audience because yeah. maybe like if i talk to her okay fine i'll to her or whatever the case is but mm -hmm. if i talk to another person maybe that person i can't talk to that person the same way i was talking to my wife yeah yeah or i can talk to my wife the same way i was talking to my brother or for example yeah. you know it's, true. it's like it's all about the audience too you know yeah yes yeah. so, all right so this next piece i'm going to read it goes like this so mm. <laughs> i want to get inside your head See why you say the things you say that cut deep. No, I'm sorry, that cut deep my heart so deep. No, that cut my heart so deep. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. The rage that it flows before leaving your mouth. I'm that target you constantly are hitting without a standing chance. Words being thrown like bombs whenever you feel like firing. I need to see inside of you to get rid of that missile. Who is always ready for war it, it, and you know what's so crazy about this too like i, I i'm realizing that not as we're going mm -hmm. like i again like i just picked pieces that okay i want to talk about this this that yeah. and didn't realize the flow of the conversation was leaped towards this, this yeah crazy. that's crazy <laughs> it was meant to be 
Yes. Oh um, my God. It was, that was written because um, of my, I, I think he definitely inspired that piece, my ex, um, because you just don't say mean things to people for no reason. There's, there has, there's reasons why there's a lot of assholes out here or people that say or do the fucked up shit that they do. There's reasons as much as they don't want to admit to it. I mean, they were hurt and now they don't know how to deal with that hurt. So they just want to hurt everyone else, you know? And I just, I really was just like, I do want to get inside his head or just get inside someone's head to be like, what, what has happened to you that makes you want to treat me like shit, you know, or say those things to me. Like, I really want to get inside someone's head and be like, why are you such an asshole? Like what, what has happened to you? Because I, I don't, like I said, I, I think it's because I don't say anything mean like that. And like I said, because I've had that for so long where someone would say, people would say mean things to me. And I know how it feels to, you know, be tore down or someone brings up shit from 10 to 15 years ago or someone just really just wants to be mean to you for no reason. And I really don't understand, you know, why a lot of people are that way. So I was like, I sort of want to get inside your head and see why. Why are you yes. doing this and saying this? Because it's true, I want to be inside someone's head to be like, if you want to sit, call someone. A, I mean, he for him saying you're useless. What are you good for? Why did you say that to me? Because I couldn't get that. Right. Up. That was more than just the stupid irony board. I couldn't get it. But why would you say that to me? Like, I want to know why. Right. So. Instead of just saying, "Hey, maybe you're having trouble. Let me help you with that or yeah. something." You know? But no, you was like, "You useless. That's not." Wait, Damn. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, yeah. Damn. But that's why I sort of want to get inside people's heads to see why they say the things that, that they say to people to hurt them. I want to know the reasons why that you're being this person right now. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I used to get that with my father growing up because um, I think I said before how my father was not affectionate. <laughs> he was always quiet. Like he'll open up about some things, but nothing that it was never the things that I felt he needed to open about. Like, for mm-hmm. example, when I was going through puberty, like, I didn't understand what I was going through. Like, he never yeah. sat down and explained that. So I had to learn that on my own. Mm-hmm. And I had to ask teachers that mm-hmm. looking at me like, wait, but why is your father telling you this? Or yeah. whatever, you know? And I think part of that also has to do with, because I, I come from a Puerto Rican, like, old school, 1950 Puerto Rican background, where mm-hmm. they're just, like, they're just not like that. They just don't sit down with their kids and talk about things. Or they tell you, oh, you need to save money, but mm-hmm. they don't give back where they give, they show you how did, how did you save yeah. money? How did you yeah. do this? Yeah. And they never, they never give back. I think that's the problem to older generation. They just don't give back. And yes. then we're wondering, how did you guys do it? Oh, by doing, no, that's not enough. You gotta tell me yeah, something. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But like you said, like that's how I felt about my dad where I wanted to go inside his head. Okay, why would you do this? Or why would you react this way over something so dumb? Like mm-hmm. if I had my TV on volume three, that was too loud for him. I'm no, like, well. what? <laughs> and then you're getting mad at me about things. That I'm like, what are you talking Like, why are you getting upset? Like so over-exaggeratedly upset. Yeah, there? that's how my dad was. Like with me and my dad just don't have a great relationship. My dad's wow. um, old school Italian and my mom's Greek, so I'm Greek at a time, but like, my dad, his temper just about anything, he would just go off. Like, he just, he didn't know how to calm himself. He just would lose his shit all the time for no reason. Like, he had said, if the volume was on three, it's too loud. It's going to piss him off. And, you know, I didn't clean my box one day and he'd let me have it, dude. Like, it was just like little things, like, you know, I don't, yeah, so our family sounds similar, especially our fathers. <laughs> well, oh my God. And I think, I think, cause, yeah, he was like 1950. So I think that's their, th- I don't know what it is, but I, oh my God, it is mm-hmm. so, because my father and my brother would get at it, and cause I'm the youngest of three kids, so my okay. sister was the, like the middle child. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh my god! So I saw everything, and I didn't understand a lot of things I was seeing. So yeah. I would react the way they would react. Mm-hmm. And then when I got older, I would try to explain. And the thing with me, my dad, unfortunately, um, we had a language barrier because he was Spanish and mm-hmm. and, and, and we spoke English, but mm-hmm. I. My Spanish was broken, so he yeah. didn't understand what he said. So yeah. my sister came off the wrong way. It's not what I was trying to say. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, where's my brother? My sister they could translate for me. Like, hello. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You know, but it was such a, oh my God, it was such a struggle. And every, again, everything you said is so true. I guess it's the whole, it, it just didn't work. It just wasn't working. Oh, yeah. I really showed my dad was good after I came to Lord. Like 2015 was when he started to come around and I saw that mm-hmm. I started to better. So I enjoyed more the five years that I had with him before he died, and opposed to the the, the the twenty plus years I had before that just wasn't that great. Yeah, I understand for sure, completely. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. So this is the last piece I'm gonna read, and then after that, we're gonna talk about the book. We're gonna talk okay. about other stuff as well. So okay. All right. 
this piece I, I love this piece because me and my wife have this conversation all the time all right. <laughs> okay <laughs> the problem is we all start to get too comfortable goals slowly never get set broadening our horizon down. we just get into the ins and outs of the daily routine forgetting there's still so much life to be lived memories to be made laughs to still be laughed new foods still to be tried being able to breathe a new day nowadays is such a blessing so do the things you always wanted to do even if you have to do it slowly all the stories i have heard back on people's lives were the smiles they had the places they've seen the people who were there not what they drove or what clothes they wore mm -hmm. get out of your own shell and live as if it was your last day love as you will never be able to do so again and smile as much as possible even on the hardest day you know so funny i was like i, I literally just read that piece um right before we started our live i was just going through like some of my oh, old yeah. pieces reading and then i was like you know i started that's how i started chuckling when you read i'm like oh i just read this piece um so like i didn't have you know I, i've lost a lot of people in my life a lot of friends have passed away and um from a young age i mean i lost my cousin my cousin was murdered when i was little and um i had a lot of family members that were that were gone before i even met them i had a lot of family members that were close to that passed away and then there's a lot of friends that just passed away i literally just had three people i used to hang out with in a span of three months they've all passed away and i found out and it just um it just like hit me hard and i just you know my thing is like, and I look at, I feel like sometimes life's a little differently just because I've lost so many people starting at such a young age that we don't have, like I said, especially with this fucking pandemic going on, we don't have tomorrow. We don't know when it's gonna be our time. And, you know, I just feel like, you know, get mad about the things you should get mad about, but then you have to forgive and let go. You know, you can't keep on dwelling with and carrying it, and carrying that, that weight, that hate, that grudge, you know, I hate this person. I never speak, you'll never ever really speak me I hear me speak ill of anyone I really don't and right. it's just like our life is so precious and like you know people just take it for granted they really really do you know they're at, at jobs that they're miserable they don't want to try to do anything new or they're scared to do anything new that it's just like or there's people that speak hate all the time or just people are miserable all the time and I'm like you know we're really lucky especially now to be alive and it's like you know do the things that you want to do or just try to do the things that you want to do because life really is precious and you know, once we get to a certain age, we're not going to be able to do those things anymore. And I mean, I, after I left my ex, I was with him for 16 years. I started a brand new life, brand new life in New York, drove up, I drove like 14 hours in one day with my cats, because I have three cats. Well, the third one I adopted here, but yeah, I didn't know anyone walking in, but I knew I always wanted to go to New York. I wanted to do, I went to school for like radio podcasting. And that's what I really, the bigger picture of things I want to do. Um, but yeah, and like I took a chance and it's been great, you know, especially with this book and all this stuff. And, but like, people just really are taking life for granted and it just makes me upset that you're so lucky to wake up and breathe and not a lot of people have that chance anymore you know so all these people are dying you know especially with corona going on and it's it's really sad you know and i hope i hope after this some people will start to realize that they should start valuing their life more and, and yeah. you know take control of it and do the things that make you happy like i'm really doing the things that make me happy i'm not hurting anyone with the things that i'm doing but I'm never going to live a life where I'm going to be depressed or sad or someone's going to make me feel like shit ever again. I'm sorry. It's just never going to happen. Right, so right. I try to write, you know, it's so funny because a lot of my pieces are so emo, you know, and I know they're like depressing and it's like funny because I'll get messages like from people like, do you need to talk? And I mean, like, I guess that's better than people putting like hate towards anything that I write. And I appreciate that right. people that don't know me want to talk, but, um, you know, it's just like, I'm really a happy person. <laughs> so I'm yeah, really excited I'm dealt with my shit. You know, I still have my bad days, but you know, I don't take my my relationship and my life for granted. You know, I, I always try to preach that to people like do the things that make you happy because what happens tomorrow if you don't wake up, you didn't do anything. You know, it's like yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah. I just want people to really I just really want everyone to just really be happy out here when it comes down to it and not dwell in the past and live in your present and look for the future in a positive way, not a negative way. You know. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm like, I'm like, I'm feeling everything you said. Like, I'm like, you left me speechless right now. I'm like, damn. Wow. It's like it pouring my heart out. I just, oh my gosh. 
I mean, me and my wife have this conversation almost every day, and I think that I think for me personally, I think this virus was God sent for me because mm-hmm. I feel like I was miserable at work, and it's like I wanted to get out of the job, but I just didn't know where. I didn't mm-hmm. know how. And again, I think what you said too was the whole miserableness behind it. Mm-hmm. I know miserableness is not a word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like the, the 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 reality behind it, what it all comes down to is it's like it's so overwhelming it's like like you said sometimes we're just scared because we don't know we don't know we're scared of the unknown yes yes and then and then there was the whole term but what if i don't get a job right away because i want to leave right now but Mm -hmm. you know not realizing okay but um not not realizing okay but what if maybe i I look at it if if god's prolonging it then maybe Mm -hmm. there's a reason for that no there is there's definitely a reason for sure. You know, because God's not going to let you go through some things just to go through it without it being a bigger picture behind everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep, so, that's oh, true. man, everything you said was just, ah, I'm feeling <laughs> it. It's so true. Well, wow. It's, it's, I mean, it's I, I really do really look at life like that. I just want, you know, I think just because I've been a part of my life, it just wasn't joyful and it wasn't happy and you know, and I never want to fall down. You know, I never was like, you know, when I was depressed, when I was sad, I never was suicidal. I never had those thoughts that I wanted to do something to myself. But I could see how someone would want to because once you're in that dark, that hole, you just, you don't feel like you're ever going to get out. You just feel like you're lost and you're alone. And the person that claims to say they love and care about you are the ones that are treating you horrible. You know, and I mean, it's just like, I know how it is to feel like you just sort of like lose hope after a while like things are just always going to be like this and i'm just going to be miserable and i can't change it and it's like no you can change it you know but i think that's why i just preach about forgiveness and really living a life that you're happy with so much because i've been in a life that i wasn't happy with for a long time so amen yeah. amen and, and, and it's true because i know with me um when i was asked the question you know do you accept jesus as your lord and savior and i'm thinking in my head, you know what like at first, I hesitated. I remember. I never forget this. I'm not old or whatever. And then they asked me again. I kept hearing, "Okay, you've tried everything. Like, mm-hmm. what's the worst that can happen?" And then I really had to come to realization. You know, like, sure, I don't know what's gonna happen. So you know, fine, Lord, I don't know you. I don't know what I'm doing. So here, I'm giving you my life. Yeah, and that's what happened to me. I feel like that has been the best decision to the fact that. I want to change. That's what mm-hmm. it came down to. I want to change. I was tired of being sad. I was tired of being depressed. I was tired mm-hmm. of feeling sorry for myself. I was tired of pe- putting people the- around me down. Because that's mm-hmm. exactly what was happening after a while. And a lot of my friends did not want to be around me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it got to the point, like, you know what? Fine. Let's see what happens. And it's so funny because once I came to the Lord, I started to see things I never saw before that was already there. And it was just like, oh, crap. Mm-hmm. And the things that people would tell me about certain people, and then they were all coming to light, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, "Oh crap, okay, Lord." And that was my, and then the, what it all came down to is, you know what, Lord? At the end of the day, you know what's best for me. So if you got to get rid of all the residue of my life, then get mm-hmm. rid of it. But yeah. man, the it's not just the fact that God got rid of it, but there were certain things that happened. I didn't think they were gonna happen the way they did, and I was mm-hmm. just like, "Wow." Yeah, and um, even too myself, I've lost some friends who have lost some um, family members along the way. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm not gonna say friends. I've I've known a lot of people, and yeah. I've lost a lot of people to death. Um, yeah. I don't really have a lot of people I could say they're my friends. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to describe it. But I, some of my friends, unfortunately, I see them die. Some of them, I like like by accident. Like one of my friends jumped off the roof. I said, for example, like I see stuff like that. Yeah that traumatized me to this day even though I, I'm better with it now but when and it's funny too because there's a friend of mine that the day's actually coming where um you know like I don't want the attention on me or whatever but the day's coming of that day we found out and jumped off the roof so it's like a day's coming soon so I, I don't know how I'm gonna cope with it this time but you know like I've always dealt with it better I always wrote it down and I think that's yeah. how powerful poetry is that it's just <laughs> such a such a beautiful thing. I think, like I said, like you have people like yourself and and other people within the community that we can look back. Like, damn, I can relate to this. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, understand that like, you yep. see that is such a beautiful thing. You know? Yeah. Yep. So true. So true. Um. Mm-hmm. No, um. <laughs> wow, Kristen, that was amazing. <laughs> Everything you said. That's 
I'm bugging. I'm still bugging out because again, my wife tells me this every day. Everything yeah. you said, I was like, wait, we talk about this every day. So I'm like, yeah. damn. Confirmation <laughs> here. So I already finished reading the pieces that I wanted to read. Now let's talk about your. Well, the first one I want to talk about first is the um the compilation that you're part of. I'm yeah. Like, it hurts. So t- tell me about that. Wait, let me see how much. We have 10 minutes left, and you know, I just realized Amanda's here. But um, Amanda, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go another hour with Kristen, and then we continue talking about her book and stuff like that. So, but it, it, we still have time, so um, she'll just text me Amanda of anything, and then we'll see how everything works out. All right, so we show everyone the cover of uh-huh. the. Um, I know. I, I mean, I don't have the book. I'm just saying. No, no, I have it. This. All right, that's this one. Okay. Oh, you said, I ordered, okay. Um, Two copies. I had them mailed here to give one to my mom, and then of course I, I want to have one for myself. Um, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So May Soul. So I actually knew. I used to follow him on Instagram. Well, I still follow him on Instagram. That's how I became aware of who May Soul was, and I would just write him saying like, "I think your pieces are amazing." Blah blah blah. And he's just he's always just been just a really genuine nice guy. Like if you meet him, he just he wants everyone to do well, and I mean he just wants to put out, like a message out there for people you know, with, the, with the poetry and um, I'll get into later on like about how he hooked up but like after you know of course I'm with him that's where I published my book through he asked you know hey I'm gonna go to the people in the publishing house you know he's like I want to know like would, he was asking like all of us would you guys want to be a part of this book and I was like yeah I mean of course I mean to be a part with 14 other writers is Yes. You know, amazing. I never really thought if you would ask me five or six years ago if I was gonna have a book out, I'd be like, Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> you know, right, and, right. I do. and I'm like, This is this is the thing. So I try to take all people but life. I didn't know any of this was gonna happen for me. But like this is why you really wanna have take life as a blessing because there's so many things, amazing things that can happen for you that you're never gonna know about. Yes. You know. This is but yeah, it's this um we we named our own chapter. So when I was writing these pieces, my pieces were basically um what happens after the relationship after you break up so it's called the aftermath okay. so that's where i just sort of was like and it's sort of i didn't know what i was going to start writing at first but it sort of just took over and all the pieces i was just writing and i was like i think this is what my chapter is going to be about just like the breakup after the relationships you know what people go through what people feel right. um right. there is one i want to read for you if i can oh, find no, absolutely read away um you moment right here i just um God, let me find. Oh, actually, here it is. One or two. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, this one, I, I this is my last one I wrote. Um, I said because I felt like this is. It sort of made me reminded me of a car accident towards like the end of the relationship. Um, so I said, we were nearing the end. I could see it. The air, pla- the air bags wouldn't deploy this time. There's nothing left to be salvaged. Lies and tears everywhere, walking away barely intact. And I just feel like oh. that sort of is when you when you have a really toxic or rough relationship and you leave it, like, you, I feel like it was just like a, like a car accident. It was just so, sorry, thank you. It was so, um, yeah, it was traumatic. I feel like since when you leave some relationship, it is very traumatic, you know? And it, oh. I don't know, it's like, I just ended that this was like the piece that ended my chapter just to wrap everything up but i don't know i just sort of feel like that's what a lot of relationships are sometimes you know i i agree with that because you know what it is too like and i'm just because i had a friend of mine that went that had a car accident years ago and like mm-hmm. both of his thing folded like an accordion like he showed me pictures of it and everything um but uh, in the, 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 the compared to what you're saying um mm-hmm. he would tell me you know after the accident and the ambulance took him out his he messed up his back for a long time. Mm-hmm. So there's the heart, there's the spot, the surgery he had to get to get certain things re- um, replaced and fixed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But as to what you said, it makes so much sense because it's not the accident, itself, but what happens after the accident? What mm-hmm. happens after the fact? Oh, I'm hurt. But there's things that it's going to be there, the remembrance of it, the pain that mm-hmm. got you to that accident in the first place. Yep. You know, it's like you said, it does feel like a car accident because there's just some things it just doesn't go away and yeah it's like it's hurtful in a way like it doesn't hurt you it doesn't hurt you as much like mm-hmm. I, I like i remember the hurt but i don't remember the, I, i'm not feeling the pain anymore but mm-hmm. the hurt's still there mm-hmm. you know and it does feel like that like, i love that analogy that's such an awesome analogy yeah thank you yeah I, 
sometimes when I write shit, I'm like, damn, <laughs> you know, like, yes. it's just, like, you don't, you don't, you don't know a lot of times what in you, what's in you until it actually flows out onto paper, you know, so, yeah. but that's, that's what I sort of was like, and I was like, oh, I really do think of relationships as like that car accident afterwards, you know, and I just felt like that was a good way to wrap up the chapter that, um, mm-hmm. that I talked about. We do have a second book that's coming out, you know, with, okay. um, yeah, because it's a trilogy, so we have three. I'm going to be in the second book, and that's going to, my chapter's going to focus more on my relationship with my father and how it's not. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So I mean, but yeah, I mean, mate, this book has been. I mean, this this book has been a blessing. Like, I have so many more friends that are writers now, and it's it's sort of like it's my friends support and they love what I do, and they're you know they they're great friends. And they show up when they they have when they should show up. You know, I'm really blessed for my friends, but it's sort of like it's nice to have people that sort of write and that sort of know the ins and out of it and how it goes you know and i mean you know how it is it's like if you're friends that are writers it's it's great yes. you know you sort of like it's like a, an unspoken bond that you have with you with these yeah people. especially yeah. when it deals with poetry you know because poetry is so personal and you pull from within and um it took me a long time to get my book out my my debut book because like everything i wrote i want to i want people to feel like this is what I'm, this is what i've been through um, nice. And I wanted to not just put bullshit on paper. I, sometimes it makes me sad with a lot of these poets that I follow now. I feel like they're just writing the right to get another book out and make money. And I don't want my work to reflect that. I want to sell books, of course, but my whole goal is that I want to, I want to help people along with them reading my story as yeah. well. You know, yeah. that's, no, that's, that's why I started doing what I'm doing. Actually, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I heard like a weird noise. I don't know. What no, it's my like, chat. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> It's my so I have all three of them in here right now, so you know. Okay, no, it's all good. Okay. No, but it's true because that's why I started writing poetry online. I almost didn't do it, and my wife's like pushed me to do it, so I finally yep. did it. But if you want to call me back in 2018, because I started doing this Instagram thing five months after my dad passed away, mm-hmm. I would have never thought it would come to this. I'm I have a podcast going on right now, and yep. now people are listening to it, and mm-hmm. we're doing this interview. I would have never thought. Like yeah. that one thing that I was always fearful. Oh, I was never good enough to do that. I'm doing mm-hmm. it now. Yeah, we don't have we don't have like confidence in ourselves, but we know that we're good. But like you know, we're we're this and this. But it's like our confidence. It's so hard to you know have that. I don't know why yeah. that is, but you know, it really, really is. But sorry. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> All right, so look, so this is what's gonna happen. We have three minutes left, but I don't want us to get cut off. So I'm gonna end this and then I'm gonna restart the live. Okay, Join sounds me. good. And then we can continue this conversation. I want to still talk about your book. We haven't talked okay. about you, your actual book yet. So, okay. um, Sounds good. guys, um, be right back. Um, <laughs> yep. Guys, thank you for joining. I'll be right back. All right. So, um, all right. Yeah. I'll see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> so, wait, were you finished talking about the It Hurts book? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, yeah. cool. So, uh, I guess now we'll talk about the, your actual book. So how did that all start? Did it start from the inspire and then inspire you to push yourself to a second book, or I'm gonna do, I'm definitely doing a second book. Um, okay. the, the second book's a little bit more happier, <laughs> more like yeah, a positive okay. fight of finding a relationship and finding someone. Sorry, my cats just want to be a pain in the butt right now. Um, he wants to be a star too. Sorry. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna bring him in so you can see him, and then maybe he'll leave. This is Hendrix. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be on the uh, TV with me. Um, so I'm definitely going to be doing a second book. I already have the title and everything picked out. Nice. But um, this book, The Wilted Walls, I mean, I think this is going to be just my favorite book because it just, like I said, it talks about everything that I went through at a young age with my father. Cause my father was physically abusive and um, oh, like verbally abusive. Wow. So, and it just talks into like the relationships that I got, you know, the relationship I got in with my ex and just... Um, it's just sort of, it's, it's, it just talks about, you know, my life and what I went through and the abuse part of it. And I mean, it's, my friends were like, damn, like your shit's sad. And I'm like, it's not real. I mean, yeah, would I want anyone to go through that? No, but I feel like this should have been spoken about. And that's why I wanted to put into this book. Cause I really do want to help people like deal with what's been going on with their lives. Like I said, you know, I really got into poetry, um, just because it, Bring, brought me comfort other people who was going through what I went through and I mean that's what really inspired me and I've always like I always wrote like I had a poem published when I was in high school which was crazy which was about 9-11 
And then I'm now I'm living in New York because like New York is always my dream to live in and now I'm doing that. But um, I really want to just help people with my book to say like they can see that she's been through some really shitty moments, but she turned around and made something out of it, you know, and I'm like, I always tell people, don't be ashamed of your past, the things that you've been through. It helps it helps to, to who you are today, you know, and I could have went, you know, I've had like a cycle of abuse in my life for a long time, you know, and with my relationship with my ex and then with my dad. And I told people like, I could have went two, two ways. I could have went up or down, you know, I was blessed to go up, you know, and that's me praying and really dealing with the things that I've been through. And I, I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm getting there, you know, and, right. um, I just really want to promote this book as I'm, I'm trying to be basically all about mental health. Anyways, I really want to get into that and I'm trying mm -hmm. to have my book be towards mental health because I, I really want to help people just help people in the end you know I don't I don't want anyone else going through what I've been through and if they are I want to help them heal and if someone can start healing from reading some of my work then that's my job and my job's done with that you know I just really want to help as many people as possible because abuse is a real major thing that no one talks about it needs to be talked about yeah, you know no one wants to be ashamed and don't be ashamed I'm sorry like it's the things that you went through you know you didn't do it to yourself you know right. these people did it to you and you have to at one point take a stand and leave you know if you stay then i feel sad for you you know i left i started a brand new life after 16 years and that was the scariest thing that i did but i just knew i couldn't be in that relationship anymore right and that's how yeah. it is it's true it's so true because i know with my um when my first girlfriend I was with her for two years but mm -hmm. i knew that relationship was not going anywhere there was no like physical abuse but there was always a lot of verbal abuse mm -hmm. especially on my end because i was frustrated because Long story short, when it came down to it, she had this bad habit of you tell your friends what you're upset about, you know, you're upset with me about, but you won't say it to my face because you feel like I don't care. But like I haven't done anything, or at least I didn't believe I did anything yeah. to make you think that. But even when I try to encourage the communication, there was just no communication there, and everything was all about okay, let's just have sex and that's it, and mm -hmm. it's just. There was no love there. Like I, I can say, yeah, I was never in love with her. I cared about her and I was mm -hmm. for the best for her, but I was never in love with her. And it's yeah. just, I kept trying to lie to myself, telling myself, no, no, I do care about her. I do. But not once I could actually say, oh, but do I love her? And it's like, mm -hmm. it was such, it, like breaking up with her, maybe like, what, six, seven times we broke up, we got back together, mm -hmm. but it's just like, but the, when I find, because it, it's, it's like, you know, I felt bad. And then, okay, let me get back with her because maybe give her another chance. But it's like, it gets to a point where, okay, but what about me? What about you? What about mm -hmm. us? Maybe it's just not working. Maybe it's best for us to. Yeah. Maybe it's just better that way, you know? And it's like yeah. that last moment, I remember when I finally said, okay, I'm going to do it this time and I'm not going to look back. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult. It really was. And then yeah. once we broke up, um, I really believe that okay it'll be easy for me to get a girlfriend i can get over it but no it's not because sometimes if you don't realize that you come off desperate or you come off very strong mm -hmm. and that other person might not see things the way you see that and i yep. fail to understand that that, that, yep. that is such a real thing and it's just when you stay somewhere for a long time with a relationship or a job or even in a family household you know it's just not healthy for you mm -hmm. there's that thing like Again, like, like, it, because it's what you know, and it's like, but if you stay there, and then you don't, and then not what, like, there's that thing. If you don't like where you are, mm -hmm. move. You're not a tree, but sometimes yeah. we don't know how to get out. I oh, think yeah. we need, we need that light. We need something, a sign saying, okay, mm -hmm. it's okay to get out. Yeah, it's yep. okay to not be in that relationship anymore. It's okay if that person does not agree with you because maybe your differences is. I mean, you're different. Your yeah. your your level of thinking is different, you know. Yeah. And I think that was the thing with me too. I had a very hard problem with acceptance, and mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was to like be okay if the thing is not okay. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I know what you're saying. Um. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're saying. Um. I just. I don't know like I'm just trying to think like with my ex it just was it just was rough with him he inspired a lot of my pieces I'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know um so 
but I feel like too like when you leave you have to do your healing like you know I left you know I think like a month and a half later I met someone and it was just like and it, it took me a while but it was just like a really long a really long rebound and I this guy just got out of like a five-year relationship you know and I think it was at the moment we didn't really know how to be alone you know and I never was alone nice. like I you know I moved to Illinois and that's why I graduated school but you know I was with my friends and my family growing up and then it was like it was a shell shop and I moved to Illinois and I knew my ex's friends and they become my best friends but then it was like um it was like, I'm trying to swap my train of thought like you. Oh, my God. I was trying to, like, where am I going with this story? Oh, no. So, like, it was, then I had his friends. But, you know, I always had someone around still constantly, you know. And when I moved to New York, I had, like, no one. It was just me and myself going home from work. And I was blessed that I made friends right away that are still my friends to this day that I call my best friends now. But, you know, it's just, like. I wasn't taking my time to heal when I left and I was going out and me and this guy were drinking a lot and then I just remember like I, a couple months after I woke up and I was just, like me and him we just went around the city and just drink way too much and I woke up and I was like I gotta start dealing with my shit again like you know you don't realize how much of a number someone does on you until you're actually out of the relationship and I knew yeah. like it was bad but like I didn't realize like I had no self-confidence I didn't think anyone was gonna love me again I was like I couldn't get this to work after 16 years you know is it what's what did I do? What else could I have done? But then it's like, you know, you when you really uh, do yeah. throw yourself in, you couldn't have done anything else. It's still, it, just because this person loves and cares about you doesn't mean that you're going to get that back in return, you know, from that other person. Amazing. But um, I do preach, like I said, a lot about healing. I remember I lived in Astoria when I first moved to New York, and then I moved to Brooklyn for about nine months. And I took like four months away over the summer and just really just worked and went home and just worried about myself. Like I really had to start healing. Cause I'm like, if I don't, then I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be truly happy if I don't heal. That's like true. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. keep on living this lie that everything's fine and everything's not fine. You know, I had to really take charge and be like, hey, what he did was fucked up. And I had to acknowledge that. Cause you don't want to think people that you care about are fucked up or, you know, they're they're this other person. You know, you want to look at everyone you care about is, you know, they're not this, this mean person and they want to do that. But you know, I had to accept that too with him and I really had to be by myself to learn that and be by myself and be comfortable with being by myself. Like right. I can go home from work and I'm fine being by myself now. But before I wasn't like that, you know, I didn't want to go home from work. I didn't want to be by myself, you know, and um, it took me a long time to really get my confidence back and really get who I like. I always said, like, I feel like my smile really came back after after I yeah, left, him, you know, because I didn't I wasn't even. If you know me, I'm always talking about food or I'm laughing. I want to be with, like my right. friends and my family, you know, like I'm really, really just positive and I really enjoy my life. But like, I didn't even have that anymore after a while. I just, right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even laugh anymore. And I'm like, that's just not who I am, you know, I you know, laugh. but you have to be, I tell people you have to be able to be by yourself. You have to, because if you're not going to be happy with your people look for happiness in other people and that's not going to happen. You're never going to be happy. You're yeah. never going to be happy then you're going to always, your happiness is going to depend on them. And that's, that's a horrible way to have them. That thing can oh, be, it, it really, it sucks, you know? And you, um, it took me, like I said, my confidence was really gone for a long time, but, um, it just, I'm happy it came back, but you have to heal. You have to heal, you know, and that's the number one thing, you know? Yeah. So like I always say like, there's a right way and a wrong way to heal. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, because yeah. sometimes, the wrong way to heal or what you think is the right way sometimes are the ones that hurt you the most but mm -hmm. like um i know like like um oh crap well, why is my thoughts but you but but you you look back at some things and sometimes you like i know for me like i wonder okay oh, did i really do that but you know like I, i've come to realization well you know what but that's just where i was at the mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. That's where I was at that time. I'm not there now, but that's where I was. Like I would, be, I would read some old pieces, and um, I'm like, Damn, I don't remember writing a lot of these pieces that I have, right? So mm -hmm. I was telling another gentleman who goes by the name of Brian Edwards, and he said, like, like po poetry is like tattoos. Mm -hmm. Like they're there, you could change it, and it's true, I could change it if I want to, but I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to change it. Right? This no. is where I was at that time. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if I change it, then I'm not recognizing where I was anymore. Yeah. It's like I yeah. lose the originality of what that piece was. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I like that a lot. 
So um so your book, right? So mm-hmm. this came out when? Like January twenty fifth, when the January twenty fifth it was yeah, released. Um and it was so funny, like so the title years I was probably like let's see, I've been in New York for four, probably like seven years ago. I woke up in the middle of the night and this this these words were in my head, the wilted walls. I don't know why if I was dreaming something, but I remember waking up and I'm like, I'm gonna save this. I don't know why, but I was like, I just, I don't know why this, that was in my head when I woke up, but I saved it. But then um, I feel like it sort of was leading me into, I guess, this book because I met Mate. So Mate Soul, I met, like I said, I was a fan of his. I followed him on Instagram. I, like I said, I always would reach out and be like, hey, I like your pieces. And I remember he was really sweet. And he was like, you know, his book, and I congratulated him when his book was coming out. And I was like, hey, I just want to say I'm really happy for you. That's great. And then he's like, you know, I just feel like I need to send you my book. And he sent me his book for free, which I thought was just like, that's insane. Like what first time, you know, person out here is going to send you a book for free, you know, and I'm like, so it was just, it was just like instantly, I just really just respected him and I respected his work and the things that he's been through. And then I didn't know that he opened his um, own publishing company. So I really didn't start really show. I've been writing poetry consistently for like six years now. And I didn't show anyone my work until about a year, almost two years ago. And I was like, well, what do you think? And my friends were like, oh, this is really good. I'm like, is it really good? Are you just saying it's right. good? Are you trying to be nice? And then, you know, I just wanted to get his opinion just because I respected him so much. There's a couple pieces that I pulled and I said, hey, can you give me your opinion? And he was like, yeah. And then when he wrote back, and I still saved the email too. And he's like, you know, he's like, this, these are really good. He was like, I would like to put this in a book for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> a book? <laughs> Wow. And I was like, this is crazy. So um, that's how our whole relationship started. I mean, he's just so nice, so humble. Like anytime I have an issue or anything, I can always text him. He's just, he really, really is just an all around good person. Even the first time we met, we hung out for like, I think two hours and we were talking, you know, we just, we, we, we really did vibe right away. And, you know, he's like, I showed you your pieces to my other friends that are writers and I love them. I was like, really? It's just like, you know, I just, I never thought I was going to be able to have a book. And, you know, I, I guess it was a blessing. I found him. We started talking and everything's from there. But um, everyone always asks, like, what's the title about? And I really feel like, so where do you go when you have a, a, something fucked up in your relationship, a relationship ends? We always go to a room. We're always in our room. We don't want to be around anyone else, you know. So I just feel like that's sort of like sometimes I call it the wilted walls. It sort of reminded me like how a flower, you know, starts to wilt. That's why I sort of got that from it too, because a lot of things die in there. Sometimes your sanity dies in there, or a lot of things like your emotions die in there. Or you know, you just it sort of it sort of just like it's a room where you spend a big chunk of your time if you had something to happen to you. So yeah. I just sort of was like the and then I put like the liquor bottle like on the floor because a lot of times when you of course when you're going through rough times you're drinking. So mm-hmm. and um. I don't know, like, it was hard to get the picture, like, I have the book, I brought this to my mom to get her, but, uh, the book, so, like, the picture, like, we tried for, like, four months, because he couldn't get the picture out of my head onto the book, he's like, I don't know what you want, so we got it as close as we could, and it pretty much, it is, like, the walls wilting over, and there's, like, the bottle of liquor right there, but, it, like I said, it just sort of symbolizes where we're at most of the time in our life, if anything traumatic happens, we're in our room, we do feel like wow. we're dying. You know, we don't feel like, yeah, it's like we do. You don't feel like there's going to be life or there's not air sometimes. And you're like, you're crying so hard because you can't catch your breath. I don't know. It just sort of just brought everything together. And um, that's where we spend a lot of our time. But um, the book itself means a lot because, like I said, it just, it shows what I've been through, but it shows where you can take your life afterwards, too. Like I said. Yeah. It's so true because. I always have this thing with and it's funny because you talk about walls and I've said, mm-hmm. you know, I spoke about this with my wife. I've talked about I actually I even have a piece that I, I posted called Buildings and it talks about walls and mm-hmm. one thing I said in the piece was that every brick of the wall mm-hmm. represents the truth, a lie, or a hurt we can't seem to get over. Mm-hmm. So it's like the more we built these walls based on those things the more our walls become buildings. Yeah. And then now we are the ones that built the walls that surround us when we sleep. So each mm-hmm. room, each part of the building and the walls that create become so big that now when it's time to tear the walls down, mm-hmm. it's like, um, okay, how am I supposed to break that down? Yeah. Like, I had a lot of years of stuff. Yeah. Like I how, know. you know? 
and that, like, like I, mean, I don't know if this is a good analogy, but I always say, like, that's like telling a druggie to, to stop doing drugs. Like, mm-hmm. you do that. Yes. Like, that's why they have 12 step programs for that. Like, in this yep. case, this is a process you have to go through. Like, I look at it, like, in my life, okay, there's every brick, I have to look through every brick to see yep. mm-hmm. what each brick represents. And then mm-hmm. after that, I have to go see, okay, Am I really going to deal with this for real, for real this time? Because you know how many times we see this brick, but then I'm like, ah, oh, I'll deal with it later. Mm-hmm. And we put it back where it is. But then we go through every brick, but then we always put it back. But we don't realize we're building more bricks on top of each other without yeah. realizing. Because then as I'm putting this brick down, but then there's another brick we built on top of yeah. uncertainty. And the more uncertainty there is, the more higher they can. It'll look like the Trump Towers. Yeah. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. Like man, but it's just so, like, like it's just what, well, like you know, it, it's a powerful analogy though because mm-hmm. well, I think that's the best match to give when it comes to protecting ourselves, the mm-hmm. shield, like to to, yeah. to you know, we put this wall, we build things around us to just us to be emotionally safe, you know. Yeah, that's exactly but, we have to. We have our guard up. Oh yeah, I have my guard up so much, especially when it comes mm-hmm. to like dating like other men. I'm like. Because I'm like, you're, you're too nice. Or why are you being so nice? Is, is there a motive? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Or, like, is there a motive? But it's like, we have to think, too, that everyone that we're going to meet is going to be bad. And, you know, if I have to give someone a That's chance. True. Like, I would want someone to give me a chance as well, too. You know, right. we do have that, that wall up. And, yeah, I have a pretty high one. <laughs> you know? No, but you know what? I look at it this way. Like, even though we all have walls, but let's be honest. So a lot of times, we do need those walls sometimes. We need those We walls. do, yeah. Because we don't know who, what these people are going to be, what their motives are in the end. So, yeah. And it's like trust takes a very, very long time to earn. It's just yeah. not given, you know? And I learned that, too. Like, I, I meet people, especially when I was younger, like, trust them, like, right away. And then they end up screwing you over. And it's true. Like, you have, your trust is earned. It's never given. I'm sorry. And that's, it sounds... And- me to say like that but it's true because there's a real lot of shitty people out here you know that want to take advantage of you and just use you and you know you can't you have to you have to guard yourself as well you know That's so true, right? yeah. yeah because my dad was like that all. But, see like it's funny because like me and my brother myself like we all grew up same household but we all grew up understanding life differently i know mm-hmm. when i was growing up i always grew up with the assumption that you can't trust nobody at all mm-hmm. because yeah not every person you meet is there for your best interest. Oh, yeah. like, I was going to say something in Spanish, but I'm like, no, no, you're Italian, you're not Spanish. I can't mm-hmm. really say it in Spanish. <laughs> so I'm going to try to say it in mm-hmm. Like, oh, but, and then when you tell somebody the truth, then you're the bad guy. Like, yeah. There was always this thing with my dad, but, like, without me really, because he had a lot of trust issues. Actually, that was, that mm-hmm. was just a thing. Yeah. But I feel like that affected me as an adult, too, even yeah. to this day, because now that I have a child, it's like, Oh, crap. Okay, so I kind of sort of understand my dad better now. Why yeah. he's like that? And I think I'm saying it's because of how life is today. How mm-hmm. kids, ah, oh, Lord forgive me, but kids today, I'm sorry. Are kids horrible. Not They're horrible. I can never that. say and do the things that these kids do. My mom and dad would beat the. I mean, like, I mean, my dad, but you know, like, we I had to never belt. do that. Yeah, there yeah. was a belt. I had a belt, mm-hmm. slippers, whatever you could name. I've gotten hit with them, and it's meal on rice, whatever. And it's like you try to explain it to a kid today. I'm calling you TS. Like it's like, oh my god! Like oh, kids no today would not no last time. one second. Like I have a niece, I have a nephew. They're like, oh, but like for example, my nephew um complain. Oh, well, this is a long time ago. So he's complaining because my mom, said, his mother, my my sister told him, oh, you stay in your room for like a couple of minutes, think about what you did, and he just mm-hmm. couldn't handle it. I'm like, listen, you're lucky you even get that because when it was me, mm-hmm. either I got the bell or my father would take everything out of my bedroom and all I had was my mattress. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's all it was. And that's wow. it. Like, and you weren't allowed to touch anything. You weren't allowed to get out of your room unless you go to the bathroom. Like, this is how it was when I was growing up. Yeah, that's how my dad was. Like, we. I mean, he was so, like, strict on how clean everything was. Like, we would turn a pitcher to mess with him. He would get so pissed and turn it back. Like, he like he had, like, a routine in his car of, like, how everything was precisely placed. And if you move out of place, he gets so mad. I was just like, wow, this is crazy. My mother crazy. was like that. My mom was like that. And then my dad was to get mad because we got my mother mad. 
or if my father was mad about something and then mm-hmm. we tell him he was wrong, my mom, you know what it is? Again, they're old school, so all yeah. my, my mom's the wife, my father's the husband. You gotta yeah. defend the husband no matter what. Even though she knew she was he was wrong about a lot of things, but he yes. always defended my father. It was just my yeah. But have you learned because like I've talked about this recently too, like when I have kids and what what I want to teach my kids, especially what I was taught, I don't want to have the same thing that my kids go through, like what I've gone through. So like, I think you having kids differently now, you sort of know like the, some of the things you're going to say or do that you've seen with your father, you know, and, and I'm very protective of who I do want to have kids with, you know, because like I said, I just don't want to have kids with just somebody just because I want to have kids. You know, I want to, I want them to see what a healthy relationship is. You know, Absolutely. I never saw that growing up and I want to, I want them to see this is how relationships are supposed to be, you know, and it I'm makes me fun. nervous with people, you know, like when I, when I think about it, like what, I, what am I going to teach my kids? What am I going to say to my kids? You know, and so I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way with your kid and you're not going to do and say some of the things and your exactly. dad has taught you, this is, this is what I'm not going to do with my kids, you know? And right, right. Yeah. And also too, because we try hard not to be like our parents. Like I, yeah. I know I try very hard not to be like my father. Well, I try not to. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying that at all. It's all yeah. even, oh, even mama saying that it's just, there's just certain things I've inherited that I'm like, okay, I cannot be like this. Like yeah. one super sure, maybe this is petty, but um, and I have to learn not to curse in front of my son because he'll repeat it, whatever. And even though that's just maybe that's probably, probably not that bad compared mm-hmm. to other things, but that can go a long way later on. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, especially now the way it is now, like you you, you grab your kid's arm that's already ACS, okay, yeah. it's child abuse. And it's like just grabbing him like this, yeah. like that's already a phone call. And I'm just like, okay, I can't. You know, but like even like my temper is a lot like my father's. Even though I feel like it's a lot better now than it's mm-hmm. ever been before I came to the Lord, but it's like I know like there's certain things that still trigger my anger, and I'm like, oh, my temper, and I'm just like, okay, I gotta be careful. Remember, I have a child, and I have to be telling myself that, and I think yeah. that's what it comes down to. One thing I've learned about parenting, about parenthood, that I'm learning even right now, I'm still in the process of learning, is the fact that. Having a child will teach you about yourself. Yeah. You will learn so about yourself that you may even know you even have. Yeah. Aww. And it's like, oh, snap. Okay, reality check. Yes. And, and you'll see things. Like, it'll bring out some true colors about you that you probably didn't even know you... you like, traits that you probably didn't even know you had. And yeah. maybe you knew you never acted a certain way, but maybe you just weren't aware of it, and it brings it out of you. Yeah. It, 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 sometimes it hurts, you know, when yeah. you have to learn it from your child and he's only one, like that, that hurt, like the reality hurts sometimes. Yeah. Wow. That's good. At least you're like learning to, how old's your son now? My son just turned one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, oh my February. Lord. So, yeah, Congrats. He's, um, That's awesome. What's his name? His name is Lucas. Lucas. Oh, nice name. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so his middle name is after my father's name. His name is Juan, but I call him John because there's like there's too many Juans in the family, and a lot of people don't know this about me. But my actual name was Juan Andres Morales, but yes. that's where the jam comes from. Jammed him down. That's my initial J A O. Oh, okay, nice. We don't know about that. They really yeah, I was know. wondering how you got the name. <laughs> yeah, no, because I was trying to be funny. No, a lot of people don't know this, but the the, the backstory behind the whole handle. When I first was creating a poetry pick, okay, I keep getting these uh, hmm. okay, notifications on the phone. So <laughs> the way Jam Them Down came about, I was just looking for a funny, fancy name because there, there was all these names like um, being real, being true poetry, or by me, you know, <laughs> yeah. movies like the cows, uh, love driven by fate. Like, there was all these things, mm-hmm. and it's like. Okay, I need a nice fancy name because I didn't want to use my personal page, which I had a different name before that. Yes. And I said, you know what? Like, whatever. So, mm-hmm. if I write it down or jot them down, I said, what about jam them down? Screw yes. it. And that's how I came up with it. But to tell me back in 2018, you're going to say, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, well, it's going to eventually become a community page and you're going to have a podcast and do this. Yeah. Tell me that. Then I would have thought you were crazy. And I'm like, wait, now it's a community page. I have a team. Now I have yeah. this podcast going on. I'm just like, oh, snap. This is really happening. Yeah. But that's where the jam comes from. My initials is jam. 
that's like what that. and really it's catchy cool. so i mean like it's good trust me like you hear it and it gets your attention so i mean that's exactly what you want anyways you know now it's good i like it i like it a lot <laughs> <laughs> that's how it happened and then i said okay so i gotta make a new page which is my own poetry because i did it in my personal page a long time ago because i wasn't really on it anyway Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know what, I'm, this time around, I'm going to just be careful about what I post. I said, you know, screw it. I'm going to have everything on this page, one page, poetry, pictures, whatever, and whatever mm -hmm. I'm going to do with it. And that's the bottom line. And then I'll turn this page that we're on now into a community page. Because mm -hmm. as there was a lot of communities coming up, there was a lot of them that were leaving school. Yeah. But I knew one, a few things the communities weren't doing that I wanted to do. And I said, yeah. you know what? Now, there's certain things that I, I still have visions for that I feel like, okay, mm -hmm. they're not doing this, so I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Oh, like, like they don't, like, I know, I know some pages are doing like, like interviews too, like, like what, like what you and I are doing right now, but not mm -hmm. in this way where, because at the 24 hours, the live goes, and I say, at the 24 hours, it's gone, and I wanted to save the lives and have them on podcasts. And the thing I like about that goes on Spotify, Apple, Google, Anchor, mm -hmm. and so on. And people who, and, and you put them in categories that let's say someone bumps into it, you never know. Because I, yeah. I plan on doing more than just Instagram. I'm hoping to expand more outside of this. Yes. Yeah. I have some projects I'm working on that I feel like is going to be good for all of us, you know, and I'm yeah. excited for which I can't talk too much about it yet. No, I understand. Yeah, I get that. No, but I like but, what you're doing with your page because it pisses me off that there's a lot of these pages out here that, okay, I'll promote your work, but you have to pay me. I'm like, why? Like, yeah, I, I heard about I that. I don't see much that. about that. I've heard about that. Like, you're you're supposed to be a community of writers and helping each other, but then you want me to pay you to, so you can get more likes on your page. But then, I'm really realistically, how many of those people are gonna really go to my page? There's right. gonna scroll by, a scroll by, maybe like my thing, and then on your page, and then it's, is that really gonna pull traffic to my page? You know, and I just think that it's it's sort of messed up that they want to charge us to put and i'm like no it's not like that like i don't think that's cool at all i've heard about that i've heard about that i don't know too much about but i've heard about that so i i've seen a few that kind of approach me about that and i just like um i'm like nah like um those are people that just when this was my original page you know hey you know um hey, i want you to share some of your stuff here you know we'll get you a thousand like ten thousand followers I'm like, okay i'm not here for the number like my whole thing is and this is something that i've learned when i went live with another poet named um silent lover who, who i i know her as natalie she mm -hmm. said it's not about the, like you see that number that's on the top of the thing next to the yeah. top it's not about the number mm -hmm. it's about the people whoever's there mm -hmm. And they stay there. Those are the ones I, I care more about the person I'm impacting when I'm yeah. doing the live. So even if it's just three people and that's mm -hmm. it, you know what? The fact that those three people stayed just yeah. because they say, you know what? But I knew that they like like those are the people I care about. I don't care about if you just like my stuff and then okay, yes. and I never hear from you again. Yeah, I like the comments too, but you know what? But the fact that the ones you interact with the most are the ones you hold on to the phone. Yeah, I've that's true. Great, great people. Of that. it's true i do have like some loyal people on my page that always comment or leave and it's like i always like thank them too like thank you like i appreciate it and it's really not even about like with me the likes it's just like when someone writes me a message oh i really like this piece this piece meant a lot or you know they comment like that's what i really care about you know the comments that i that i touch in a certain way that you want to yeah, you want to nice. say something about that you know and um it's just, I mean, it just makes me want to continue to write, to continue to write the things that I write and hopefully reach more people, you know, and I am going to start a podcast that it's going to, it's going to be based towards mental health because I'm just, like I said, I'm just such mm -hmm. a big mental health advocate because like this shit needs to be talked about so much more than it has, you know, and it just really makes me upset and, um, you know, cause that's what I went to school for. And then I did have a podcast. I did, I mean, I think like eight, eight or 10 episodes, but it just, wasn't feeling me it was like my single life in new york the horrible dates that i've been on and it was okay. just like after a while i was talking i was like this is not what i want to talk about like i like to laugh and talk shit and you know be who i am but like it just wasn't fueling what i wanted to do and like i want to have my own successful podcast or radio show like that's that's been since i was 18 years old yeah. but um i'm gonna have it based more towards mental health now and i feel like especially with this stuff i hope that i can actually start reaching people with it as well too mm -hmm. And, and I think, um, do you know? Do you know who Gary V is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow him. That guy, 
because mm -hmm. he's I think he did a post like that like like mm -hmm. social media and like what we're doing now this is like the game right now yeah you have to because no one can do anything we're all sitting home on our phones on our you know watching tv listening to stuff and i just feel like i just felt like it was sort of like sort of how just leading me up until like this for my podcast i think it was just like i woke up one morning and i said this is what i'm gonna do and i and i just felt you know when you know something's right like yes. i just felt it and i was like this is what i already named it this is what i'm gonna start talking about and it's gonna be like one episode a week between 10 to 15 minutes it's not gonna be extensive and it's hard when you do a pod you did a podcast by yourself you know it's really hard you know you're, yes. marketing, you're selling yourself and you want people to come listen to what you have what you're selling what you're trying to do but um i think that's what i'm gonna that I'm, I'm, I'm going to do. I just ordered my microphone again because my cats broke my other microphone, which I was not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna um, market it towards the mental health. And I'm gonna like promote my book on there as well. Cause I said, I just want this book to reach as many people as possible. I really, really, really do. I just really want a lot of people to heal. Like I've healed, you know, and um, just put that positive message out there. You can go through some shit in your life that's not gonna dictate where you're gonna go in your life. You know, right. all things are possible, but you have to work like, I worked my ass off to get to New York. I worked my ass off on taking care of myself mentally and physically, you know, like it's not an easy road and I don't want people to think it's going to be like that and then you're going to make it and you're going to be fine. No, you really, it's a really hard road and you have to work on yourself, especially after leaving abusive relationships, you know, it's one of the hardest things that you have to deal with alone. You know, I dealt with, you know, yeah. I, I had my friends and parents to fall back on, you know, my mom and stepdad, but you know, I really dealt with a lot of stuff by myself and I'm sort of thankful that I did it by myself because now when things do come my way, I, I handle it so much more better and I know how to take the approach on how to handle it, right. you know, and I start to see the negative warning signs of people a lot earlier and I start cutting people out of my life too as well from it. But yeah, I, I just really like your message and what you do and you're not charging people. Like, I mean, like that just drives me nuts that these other people who are just trying to charge us for our work and um i don't know i just i just think you put a really great positive message out there you know you've, you've well, thank you. been, I received we've that. always thank just you been so, so like a fan of my work and it was just like you know like i said anyone who follows me that likes my work that shares my work it's such it's such like it's it's such an honor it really really is you know that i never thought i would have this you know and I, like i don't have a ton of followers which i don't care but you know even the people that do follow me i just really respect that and i really appreciate all of them and all of you guys for doing that because i mean it's a tough world we're out here and that we're living in and we need to yeah. really be able to depend on each other not tear each other down you know yeah. so you do something really really great that's why i was excited to do this with you because you know we just have good vibes and you just you have good energy and I'm, oh, like, I'm, I'm the girl that has the sage and sages and i'm always like if you have bad energy get away i don't care about crystals like my friends do but like no but you oh, really really God. do and i really respect <laughs> what you do and respect that your message that you're putting out there so thank you and thank you for this opportunity of talking with me it was great you know but um yeah you've, you've done great things too and i'm looking forward to seeing your um your projects you know that's coming out no, thank but, you so much. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, of course. Because <laughs> you know what's too with me? I've always been that guy. Like, I want to give back. You know mm -hmm. what it is? Like, I've never had the opportunity to have a platform of any sort. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I go to church. My brother's a pastor. I'm a pastor's assistant. I'm like, you know, because I admire my brother. You know, I'm not jealous or anything. I, I admire him so much. And I'm like, damn, I, I want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not in church, do something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, at the end of the day, I do what I do, you know, like if I have a light as Jesus, that's God, that, mm -hmm. that's God's favor in my life. Because you know what, I want to be the guy that after I die, I guess he's a man of God, but this guy cared about people. He, he put himself out there for people that, yes. you know, I, I leave behind legacy so that my son could be like, oh, damn, I remember my father used to do that. You know, that's what it mm -hmm. was. And it's really because poetry was because my father, my father mm -hmm. used to do he, he, he uh, composed music and I used to write poetry for a long time then I stopped then I thought write poetry again but it's crazy because and this how and this, now this leads into what I'm doing now mm -hmm. you know just this page alone um after my father died something mm -hmm. happened spiritually with me that I started getting inspired yeah and now, every day I'm always writing something or, or or every day I always have a thought type it yeah. up I wake up in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. And um, what it comes down to is, I'm like, you know what? I knew, I feel like my father's knowledge of writing came transfer onto me, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And now I'm just constantly writing things. That's awesome. And I'm just getting inspired. And then when I'll read your piece or other people's pieces, I look mm -hmm. back and I'm just like, 
wow, like, like mm-hmm. I relate to that so much. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing I love about this community, and I've learned now, there's a, um, everybody writes in such a unique way that I've never seen before. Yeah. That I'm like, yo, I want to write like, this. yo, Lord, <laughs> it's, it's back my mind. Yeah. And I feel like being on Instagram is a home away from home, or yeah. is, uh, like away from the outside, you know, because mm-hmm. my, my true home is with my wife and my son, but hey, like when it's just like outside of the stupidity, like this is home away mm-hmm. from home type of thing for me. You know, I love yeah. that. And I feel like social media itself, this is something that's like, it's been missing for so long, you know, yeah. it's catfish bull crap. It's like, we don't know who the real people are sometimes. It's yeah. Sucks, you, know? you know, the one thing that makes me mad about social media too, like it's a blessing that of course, me and you can talk, we can connect, we can connect with other writers, connect with people all over the world. But like social media makes me mad as well because they put out this thing that you're supposed to be happy all the time. And that's not real life. Like, if you're not happy, you're not happy doing this, you're not happy, you should be. It's like they promote that you need to be happy so much and it's just not how life works. You're not gonna, so like these, especially these younger kids think they're doing something wrong if they're not consistently happy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know? And it's like, no, like you're gonna have bad days and you're gonna have shitty days. And it's like, you know, it's, it's like, they like I said, it just makes me mad that they promote that you have to constantly be happy, and that's just not how the real world works. I'm sorry, it's not. You know, you're not going to be happy. True. Even the happiest people are not happy every single day, and if they are, they're lying. <laughs> I'm sorry, true. they're lying. Listen, I'll say it. this: <laughs> you're lying. I don't believe it. <laughs> right, and you know what? I'll say this: I can give you a scripture from the Bible that cl- that shows you that even even though Jesus was always at peace, but even he has sad days too. He yep. cried when. When, when Lazarus died, he cried when he knew he was about to die on that cross and mm-hmm. and it was that he knew his time was coming and he felt like he was gonna die and he just Lord like Lord please like I don't wanna do this, but if it's your will, I'll do it. But you saw the realness of that. Mm-hmm. You know, like if come on, even Jesus got like sad after um even Jesus got worried and and, and, and even he had some really depressing moments in his life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? To the point where, but you saw that. Mm-hmm. Like they could just say, okay, Jesus did this and that's it. No, but like they recorded specific things because you know what? It was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So it's like, so what makes you think, oh, social media happy? No. Mm-hmm. And I remember my pastor was preaching about this a long time ago, how he went to a restaurant with his wife mm-hmm. and how they were like, um, they were like, okay, they were like, like they were basically on their phones doing whatever, and then I take a picture, and they were like, like, like making look like a good time post on social media, yeah. and my pastor's thinking like, damn, like, like if I'm the person looking from the outside, that job did y'all is a blast, like I yeah. want what that person has, but you don't know what happened behind the picture. Yeah, you know, no one knows. Everyone yeah, puts on this persona. Yeah, I like it is funny because like when I would be on Facebook, the people would be posting all this stuff, and I'm like, she's not happy. She's not, I know they're not happy. Like, I, I, I'm right. around them. <laughs> you know, it's right. just what they, the right. things they put out there. And, and that's so extremely, like, unhealthy, too, you know? Like, you can't, it's like they're putting it on the front for everyone else when you really just need to be worried about yourself. And that's the first yeah. person, the only person you should be taking care of and worrying about is who, who's, why are you not taking care of yourself? And why do you care so much that you have to put this person on that you're happy when you're clearly you're not? You know, that's what blows my mind, too. Like, I've never posted pictures where, I feel like I was had was legitimately was happy in all my pictures. I wasn't trying to put on a show for anyone right. through social media. But yeah, it just makes me like I said upset that they have these people thinking that we're supposed to be constantly happy and it just it stresses me out. So I'm like, you know, these people are gonna end up trying to I mean, there's people that I had I knew someone that killed themselves, you know, and it's a horrible yes. thing and it's like, you know, and I just don't want anyone to really think that this is how life really works, that you're happy all the time. I'm sorry, it's just not, you know? So, like, this is another thing I want to talk about in my podcast, too, you know, through, like, the social media and what it really does have on you. And, like, a lot of times at night, I'll turn off my phone. I don't even want my phone on because I don't want to deal with social media. Like, me being on my page is the most I do with social media because I'm just trying to promote and reach people. But I really, in itself, don't like social media that much at all. I'm sorry. Like, I really, really don't. I'd rather just pick up a book and read, you know? And I hear you. I hear you. Like, I, I say I'd rather pick up the Bible or just, like you said, mm-hmm. read a book, period, and mm-hmm. just start reading. Um, the only time, like I said, like, the only part about social media I like is what we're doing right now. Like, these mm-hmm. things. Oh, hey, you know? Because um, it's funny, because even after this, um, 
you know, again, I'm not giving too much, but I have other poets that I'm going to be doing this moving forward. Also, yeah. again, it's like how I want to support you. I want to support everybody else. Mm-hmm. And it's like, again, like we all need this. And it's like, because let's be honest, in reality, it's hard yeah. to get yourself out there and have to recognize that. The fact that yeah. there's this community to do something like this. And mm-hmm. I want to capitalize on that. Because, yeah, we're on Instagram now, but I yeah. see this on a bigger scale. Like, yeah. I really do. Yeah. Like, you know, so you I think it's just like me. That's exactly yep. That's great to hear too. Because look at Gary B. Like, come on. When he says first post was only two likes and he said, look, look where I'm at today. Like, yeah. I, why do you know? I was telling someone that I said, you know, someone that I'm talking to, I was like, I'm, and this is like my journey like I'm really trying to build an empire with mental health with podcasting and with my books you know and it's true like I'm thinking of the big picture down the line what help am I going to put out there and you you said something earlier too which I think about this a lot like you said like you know you what you want to leave like your legacy and who you want to be remembered as and like I try to do that I want to be remembered as that I was that friend that cared or that wife that cared or you know I would I'd give you my last dollar you know we it's sort of it's true we you know we people talk about other people when they're dying or when they're getting up in age you know and i want people to remember me that actually gave a shit about other people and she tried to put something positive out there and if i am really really blessed to have kids which i want i want them to see that as well too you know like i want to inspire my kids to know that they can do anything and what kind of message i'm going to be putting out there for them as well but i like when you said that it just was like oh that's how i think so it's nice that you're thinking like that too what what are you leaving behind no one really thinks about what they're leaving behind it's so concerned about money and what they're driving and what they're wearing you know and no one really thinks about who they are as a person and what how people are going to remember you you know so i like that you i, I just wanted to like touch base on that because i like that you said that no no thank you thank you like, I, I don't think I, a lot I, of people really say that or think like that so it's really refreshing to hear someone think like that you know what legacy are we going to leave behind especially for our children right no so, amen. Man, yeah like i really believe in that and um i think with my dad i think he left a lot a lot of legacy behind yeah yeah he left a lot of money but it was about that i can go back and say yeah i can tell you right now he the fact that even when things got tough you know even though he was the way he was but he still my mother he never beat up my mother mm-hmm. he never verbally abused her i mean he verbally abused us but now purpose mm-hmm. is that he didn't know any better or whatever yeah um the fact that i can say yeah he wrote a lot of pieces he, he composed music um, mm-hmm. he, whatever money he had and yeah when my mother got sick after I was born um long story short he lost his job and then we were poor for a long mm-hmm. time and even before the sisters was even out there yeah and and, and and this I'm talking about 90s and, and we lived in a very like you know Brooklyn back in the 90s was mm-hmm. the worst time to live in Brooklyn yeah I heard it's my heard. big name Tupac I'm talking mm-hmm. about you know West Coast East um, East Coast West Coast rivalry like I lived that like yes. I remember seeing people get shot on the block like for no oh my reason. god yeah you know now thank god you know things have changed in that perspective but yeah. you know um at the end of the day I can look back and say yeah my dad was overprotected but he knew why he was being overprotected and yeah. like me having a child now I understand that now and yeah. the way things are now mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm fearful I, I even told my wife so this even though I was joking, but I was serious too. I said, "Hey, I'm not just sitting on my kid, man." Like, yeah. yeah. And then she's like, "She's like, oh, but then how's he gonna interact with people? You can't shelter me." I'm like, "True, but still, like, you know, he was joking around." But then I'm like, "Yo, I'm not just sitting on my kid." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. You're done. You're done. I don't like. I said that just you just made me really think earlier, and it was just nice that you said that for real. No, thank we think you, thank I, we you. think a lot. We think alike, and it's refreshing to have someone that sort of thinks like that. And those bigger ask those bigger, you know, later on in life, um, actions that we want to take and goals that we want to take. So no, you're 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 rocking, man, for real. You're doing great. You're inspiring oh, me. Oh, thank, thank you. I appreciate you. Know, you're really inspiring me. Seriously. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Like, listen, whenever you want to do one of these again, you're more than yeah. welcome to do this with me because this will be fun. I know you're talking for like two hours now. <laughs> 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 like, oh my God. How far it goes. No, we're just gonna do two hours now it's good no this was great like i i'm so happy that you asked me to be a part of this you no know, seriously like this has been makes me feel better too you know about what we're doing and what we're trying to promote out there you know so thank you for everything seriously you've been great oh, thank you for being I like you you know, because you could have just been like, oh, who is this guy? I don't know this guy like that. But, like, the fact like, you gave me that chance. And that that's what the whole thing, too. Because you know, I'll be honest, in life, I've never gotten a lot of chances for a lot of things. And you gave me a chance to do something like this. And then mm-hmm. to be a part of that and to have the conversation. We're both giving each other a chance to do something yeah. that I say years from now, this might be something greater and bigger than this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just 
So I, I don't like when I promote or when I support people, I don't just go one direction. I go as many directions as possible. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it should be. You know, and one thing I've learned too, and I, I, I I'm learning how to be careful with this too. You know, I noticed um, not everywhere, but a lot of places I've seen, especially here, that there are some like some places, some communities tend to be a little clicky sometimes. So yeah. I'm trying to be careful and stuff. Yeah. But I'm more like, you know, I can put everybody like here, like mm-hmm. guys, check this out, check this out. You know, and that's why I created this page because I want to support as many people as I can get to as much as possible. And that's really what my goal is: leave something behind. But I know. You know, I, like, it's not just me, it's you too. It's the next person also. Yeah, well, thank you for this too. Like, I was just honored that, you know, you even wanted me to be a part of it. So it was just, it's it's been it's been a nice blessing. So thank you for everything. Thanks for talking to me. Let me put my story out there, why I am the way that I am, what I'm trying to promote and trying to preach with people and, you know, have people see the value of their life and, you know, really things can get better and the, the power of healing. And I will say too, like, before we get off, like, and I'm really big about forgiveness like you have to forgive even if the person doesn't give you an apology like i've Mm -hmm. gotten i haven't gotten so many apologies like i should have from people but like the power of forgiveness like people are like well how could you forgive your ex and i'm like and i always say this too like i have no room in my heart for hate and i really don't i don't hate anyone and the power of forgiveness is such an amazing thing just because you forgive them doesn't mean that they have to be back in your life but like you have to forgive you really really do you know i've forgiven even though me and my dad still aren't on good, you know, we're good terms because he continues to do things, you know, but like, I really have forgiven him for everything he's done. I forgive, I forgive everyone that's hurt me and like forgiveness is, and it's like, it's for yourself. It's not being weak, you know, it's, it's for yourself so you can sleep at night, you know, who wants to wake up with that heaviness on their shoulders? You're that, that, that hate or like, you know, just, it's just, that's a horrible thing to carry around, you know, forgive yeah. and let yourself be free. And then, you know, life will get better, you know, but yeah, I, I always, preach about forgiveness you really really do have to forgive now like i mean it's just it's just unhealthy if you don't you know so right, like that's what yeah, i want to say yeah forgiveness is like such and forgiveness and honesty is such like two big things to me so um try to forgive as much as possible even if you don't want to you know eventually you're gonna have to forgive you know to sleep better at night <laughs> no, no it's true no but it's so true it's been, it, like yeah like your forgiveness is not only yeah it gives you peace but like it's for you it's not for the person it's for yeah. you, you know? it's for you it's totally and, and I'm the same way too. Like I've always been the kind of guy, like yeah, like I'll have resentment towards people because that's just something I worked on. I'm still mm-hmm. working with myself, but mm-hmm. I forgive you. Like I, I, I'm not mad at you right now, but I'm still hurt of the fact that you did this. And you know what? It is what it is, and I'm learning now. You know what? It's okay if that thing did not work out. Yeah, just because that thing didn't work does like just because that failed doesn't mean you failed. You didn't fail. That thing didn't fail. That yeah. that thing failed. <clears throat> Yeah, if that makes sense, you know. So and, and I, I I hear you on that too. I'm just kind of got like you know again like, um, I, I try my best to forgive as many people as possible. Yeah, do I still have things to work on? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. We all do. I mean, None of us are perfect. Sure. We all have things that we consistently have to work on with ourselves. You know. And if you say that you're perfect, you're full of shit too. No, we all have things that we have to work on for ourselves. Oh, yeah. But yeah, just for like I guess I just forgive like. And when you like people said, Oh, I forgive them and then they bring up things that they did. I said, No, you don't you didn't forgive them because if you did you wouldn't be right. talking about we wouldn't be saying these things right now. That's true. So like you really do have to forgive and drop whatever they had in the you know, whatever had and move on with your life, you know, and it's it, it does. It's like as soon as you forgive, it's like that weight is just it's gone. That's true. You Especially know? with my first girlfriend. It took me a long time to forgive. Like even mm-hmm. though like I cared about her and like I, I kept the cordial <laughs> with her for a long time before I got married, but I um but, but, but it took me a long time to just to let go of that because yeah. there was a lot of things and even even my even even with um like with my wife too you know when when she you know her second husband even she said oh like it took a long time to forgive but she finally learned how to forgive and it's like mm-hmm. but even stuff like that those things when we talked about it me and her it's like it helped us together too Mm-hmm. So like like if, if if you know whatever else we're holding on to, to just let it go. You know, it is. I admit it's not easy. It's no, not it's easy. not. It's not easy. But the it's fact that you're hard. honest about it, I said, look, this is very difficult for me to do. But listen, I'm gonna do whatever it takes so I can let this go. Um, one thing. Um, and this, this, it's funny because there's a Bible verse that's talking about don't let the sun go down your anger type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's true. You don't want to go to sleep angry and then wake up and then it's just you're you're sluggish because of that. Yeah. You don't want that. That's, I know it's horrible to wake up angry. I used to hate that. Me and my ex would get in a fight. 
I would just wake up angry, wake up sad still. And I'm like, what a horrible way to wake up. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just like, it's just not, it's not healthy and it's not good at all. But like I said, this has been great. Oh my God. We definitely should do this again yes. very soon. <laughs> well, listen, whenever you want to do this again. Whenever you want to do this again. Thank you. Seriously. You let me like at least put a little bit of my message out there and whoever watched, I appreciate it as well too. You know, this is the message that I'm trying to spread, especially I said, especially just with mental health because it's such a important thing for me, just mental health and us to talk about our problems and not be ashamed of what has happened to you. And um, yeah, and I, I said, I was lucky that I sort of was able to go up and, you know, let not really let this life affect the, you know, the 30 some years I did have like, you know, some form of abuse in my life, but um it just made me realize how much more I, I, I want to help people in the same situation that I have been in or even people that are worse, you know, worse situations that I've been in. But yeah, I really just want to help as many people and reach as many people as possible with my book and what like the message I'm trying to spread out there. So thank you for letting me talk about that and put that out there. It makes me feel oh, really good and I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, it's been such an honor to have you <laughs> right? So many things we talked about today it was so refreshing. Just good yeah. to know like, wow. You know, from a woman's perspective, like that, mm -hmm. like it really is that real. You know, like thank you so much for being a part of that. Yeah, thank you too. And then I'm gonna send you. I'll, I'm gonna send you a piece because we we're talking about how like we build our these walls up. I'm gonna send you a piece that I wrote because I thought of that and I wanted to look for it, but I was like, I don't know where it's at in the book. So I'm gonna send you that later on too. But yeah, thank okay. you for letting me be a part of this. It was great. Thank you so oh, much. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And then um, uh, what else? No, just so you know, too, like even after the live is over, you know, like I, for those who don't know, do though, you know, obviously, uh, once the live is over, um, I do record the lives, um, I do convert them to audio so I can upload it onto the podcast. So mm -hmm. by tomorrow afternoon, this will be on the podcast. Okay, so, like great. I say, if you wanna, yeah, you know, so all the lives always go on the podcast. Yeah, like, I always put them after they're done, you know, but just so you know, so you know, so like once it's up, I say, hey, look, it's here, and then you put, um, you know, you could like show, you know, and Mm -hmm. and stuff like I'm that. definitely going to be showing people and listen to it. Yeah, thank you again. This is great. And we'll definitely have to do it again for sure. So and I'm going to send you those pieces as well, too. So we'll be yeah. back. But thank okay. you and God bless you. I mean, this has been amazing. The last two hours of my life have been great. <laughs> so thank no, you. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored to have you here. And I'm happy you were one of the first guests I've had here. Thank you so much. Thank Kristen. you so God much. You. God bless and you. And we'll talk too. again soon. Uh, I'll, hit you up a little, I'll hit you up in a little bit privately. Yeah, sounds we'll good. After you're done with the other one. Yeah, we'll definitely talk. Okay, thank All you. Right. Take care. Thank you so much. God bless bye -bye. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye -bye. All right. <laughs>